Pam 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 Good morning, good <laughs> afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome, welcome. Well, you're so glad you're here. <laughs> to whatever this is. To whatever this is. Uh, this is the Timing Master Transmissions Live Boots and Cats and Boots and Pants. It's Boots and Pants. Boots and Pants and Boots and Pants and Boots and Pants and Boots and Pants. Um, we're painting Nightcrawler up? I don't even know anymore. Uh. Woo. <sighs> Back to square one. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hello, and welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. Today we're pinning up Nightcrawler. He's an elf. He bamps, he teleports, and he's super cool. I really like him. Um, and he's such a long-awaited character to join the X-Men for Crisis Protocol. It's going to be super dope. Um, I'm thinking traditional classic colors here. Um, blue, um, black, red, white, and some magenta smoke. We'll start with the magenta smoke because we'll want to get a layer of pink down first before we do anything else. So I want to get a layer of pink smoke and then we'll uh, use some inks. I went to Tony's office because he's on vacation and I stole some artist inks from him. Don't tell Tony, he's on vacation. Ooh. I know. I know. I know. I'm a saucy boy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use pale pink. Oh, good question. For already released miniatures, in the planning process, were there times you thought about adding other comic words like BAMP? Love that's included with Nightcrawler. Um, I don't think, for me, I don't want to overuse the automatopias. Um, you know, if, you just, if, you're just, if you're just splashing on every character, I think it kind of loses a little bit of its hit. Um, and there's certain characters just, that just really want stuff like that. I think Deadpool is a very obvious choice for something like that. And that could have been anything, um, to be perfectly honest. Um, I think we actually went through several different ideas for the automatopoeia. Um, and... You know, like I don't, I don't think you know putting a big badoosh on Bishop would have been the right call for Bishop. Um, but giving people the option for something like such an iconic sound and representation of Nightcrawler's superpower is that big bamf. And so to provide people the option, I think. And it just felt right. So, and you actually have to design around it too, right? Like, you know, doing like snicked on Wolverine um, would actually be kind of really difficult. Like the Wolverine miniature is pretty small. Um, look, dude's short. It's not my fault. Um, and there's just not a lot of places to put it. So, ha like, when you design something and there's a space for it, then you start having the conversation, right? And um, you make sure it fits. You make sure it works. You make sure there's room on the frame, right, also. Like, that's, it's a, you know, there's, if you know anything about hard plastic injection, like, everything is based around that frame and the space it contains. Um Go do some go do some research about hard plastic injection and learn some stuff about it, and you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, so definitely, I thought the BAMP was we thought the BAMP was really good. Where are we at? Oh, ba -ba -ba -ba, love the wish I'm dead for foosh foosh. Excited to be here the entire time today. Hope you're well. Thanks for doing these streams. Hey, thanks TK. Thanks for joining, and glad you could make it the whole time today. We love it when people can be here for the whole time. 
Because you never know what I might say. Boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. And pants and boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants and boots. I was hoping for swords today. I almost went with the swords. I did not. I chose not swords, but Nightcrawler does come with some sweet, sweet sword actions. It has a choice that you can make. I missed it. Does he come with a bamp to attach the smoke? He does. He does. You can choose to uh, glue right here onto these little uh, explodey stalagmites. Uh, you can attach the automatopoeia of the word bamp. And I'm assuming. I'm assuming that's going to be the most popular option is Swords and Bamp. Maybe that's why I did the opposite. I was like, everybody's going to do Swords and Bamp. Um, I'm going to do no Bamp and um, no Swords. But it's uh, also when we're able to give those options because then you really get to make it your own. Yeah. and Well, I mean, also just inspire to like maybe, maybe – Try to get some plastic card and create your own automatopoeia and add it, you know. Um, do an exploding car terrain. Like take a car and do it exploding and do a crack-a-boom. Um, and if you're, man, 90s comics, you you know it. You, you saw a crack-a-boom. Um, automatopoeia on it and then have kind of a more comic book explosion feel to your terrain set right like there's it's 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 it just thinking of new options and providing people like paths to inspiration right uh the thing i love about miniatures is like the the miniature you buy is just the starting point right it's it's the design we had to choose to start a design right we can't we can't do everything um so you have to pick something and this is what we pick and this is and there's a lot of reasons and a lot of in and outs to that process um, but miniatures are a starting point they're not the end point like you're the creative here where you get to take the plastic you get to take the idea presented and then manipulate it and create and make it your own like it's a hobby miniatures game, you know, like we were talking yesterday. If you weren't here yesterday, you missed one heck of a show. Um, I gotta say, I'm just gonna say, you missed out. You missed out. Like, this was, it was, uh, it was Don't Miss TV yesterday, and you missed it. And, um, you know, you're just gonna have to live with that. Um, or you can watch the VOD on YouTube. Or you know what? Watch yeah. the VOD. <laughs> But fine, it's fine. But but th there is something about being here, right, and getting to ask your questions and engage in the chat that that is special. It is special. But it, uh, we were talking yesterday about the it's, um, you know, it's the inspiration and the starting point for you to kind of come along and create something as a miniature hobby game, which is is the unique part of miniature hobby games. It's why we make miniature hobby games. You know, we could. You know, I know how to make one part board game plastic miniatures and I'm sure Pagani can, but we make miniature hobby games and um, there's a certain level of hobby that just is inherent to that definition and there's another level of hobby that it allows, right? And a little practice and time you can you can learn more stuff and develop more stuff and and start doing more and more and more things with the hobby that it's 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 unlimited it's it's only limited by your your positive passions and your um your unlimited dreams how many different poses did you go through to land on this one The, I think the pose was, I remember the pose was pretty much nailed, but the, the, the effect was actually explored quite a bit. Um, if you look at Nightcrawler in comics, many times he's depicted as um, when he bamps, there's a cloud above him and below him. So it's like a little mushroom cloud below and like a little... Um, 
um, umbrella rain cloud above his head. And we actually did try that and you could not see the miniature um, at, at just, just at all. You just at all could not see the miniature. Um, and so it just didn't work. Um, so really, really there was a lot more development of the, of the effect, the little cloud here, the, the, the Banff, the, uh, teleport, the teleport, um, cloud, then the actual pose, the, the pose, I re man, I re I do remember that the pose was just like pretty much just out the box, kind of knew what to do, kind of knew the sort of vibe that we wanted for the character and um, pretty much got it. And it was, it was more exploration of the actual effect, right? Like you don't want to block up above the miniature too much. There are ways to do it. Um, you know, I think, I think um, somebody like She-Hulk, it does it very well where, but that's also because She-Hulk is just a bigger character. Um, and it helps the miniature breathe and read when they're bigger if something's kind of above them and also the way it's kind of twisted a little bit. Um, you know, Cyclops, or not Cyclops, Colossus, um, I think works pretty good. Um, it could be a little twisted, but it was that was actually designed for the, for the, um, the option for some really excellent OSL effects on that from the from the palm of the Sentinel to that metal of Colossus. So there or there was actually some considerations to painting involved in that one. Um, but with the size and the way it worked on little tiny Kurt here, um, it, it just became it became kind of too much. Um, he just became overwhelmed with the design. You can tell that this is my personal tabletop miniature because I didn't cover all the mold lines like I normally would or the gaps as I normally would. A little more free here, a little more, a little more uh, just kind of doing what I want. Whatever, I do what I want. 5,000 points for correct using a stalagmite. Yeah, you might trip. So, and then stalactites, they're holding on tight. They're holding on tight. Uh, I recently attached the OVWW2 shield shape for Steve Rogers' cap me. Fun to have those little differences. Yeah, more options is awesome. Yep. Put together Sentinels. Love having so many options. Yeah, and like that's just the benefit of, of Sentinels is like being a non-organic thing um, and a robot um, opens up a lot of design for being able to do those ball and socket joints. Um, you know, you you can put ball and socket joints on a human character, but it looks really weird, right? Um, it it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't read correctly um, because the shoulders and the sockets. Um, they just always look really odd um, unless there's some sort of design of armor that you can use to hide it. Like, it's super complex, right? You just can't throw them on there and it look cool. Um, I used the extra damaged head for my Wolverine to stand on. Yeah. Trying to decide how many swords to get. Well, you get two in the box. So if you buy two boxes, you get four. So one for the tail and one for the uh, exposed foot. There you go. Two boxes, four. Perfect. That's what you need. Did you already show the Banff attachment? I was curious how it attaches to miniature. Uh, I didn't show it. It just attaches right there. You just glue it right on. It's it's keyed. Um, it's boop right there. Beep pop right there. Bigger characters can do more with the size. Absolutely. Bigger characters are always um, super... Um, it's, the bigger the character, the more uh, it does allow. Um, it's um, there's a, there's a lot you can get away with when the miniature is big, and there's less you can get away with the miniature small, and there's like ways to like cheat both of them. Um, funnily enough, like 
there's there's little tricks and stuff that you learn as you um, design miniatures and learn about the production and work with you, your production and engineering team like and they learn stuff and they come up with new ideas and you know it's a big old happy family of people trying to figure out how to make the best darn the best darn miniatures we can you know why is he so blue hey Kurt why so blue let's do a little magenta ink I skipped on Deadpool's wording. This is a miniature I may need to actually attach the letters with how iconic it is. Yeah, the onomatopoeia is super iconic on Kurt. And I'm just gonna always say onomatopoeia just because I like the word. Fun words are fun to say, so you always gotta say them. And words are just very eloquent grunts. Like, let's be real. They're just very eloquent grunts. And eloquent is the most eloquent of grunts. Would one not say? Magenta ink. Oh, that's not quite dry. There's a massive spot there that's still very, very damp. Switch to pyrrole red. Not going to be pink for long. We're going to crank it up with some magenta ink. I dug out Tony's artist inks, and I'm about to tear loose with the art ink. Oh, Eagle Genius. Eagle Genius is back. Last time Eagle Genius was here was really showing off how accurate the name was. I remember you. Why am I still using this really bad brush? Is the real question though. This brush is terrible. I have ruined this brush. I was going to say, what we're not going to do is blame Schick for it. <laughs> no! <laughs> not this time. I know where my bad brushes come from. They're mine. That is the most saturated like red. Oh my goodness. Bold pyro red from uh, the old boys at Monument. Yeah. Brushes are rarely ruined. They just change jobs. Yeah. Hurricane girl gets it. I never throw away a brush. I never throw away a brush. Those brushes just, they advance. They're like, I used to paint eyes, but then I became useful in other ways. They develop a higher skill set. Why don't I just get red on your leg there, Kurt? Well, oh, I'm really messing up today. Using bad brushes. Hey kids, don't use bad brushes. Is there any difference in feel technique you need to use for more matte paints. I've only painted with more satin brand paint. Obviously, they look different. Uh, there's not really a feel difference. There's just learning what the paint wants to do, um, which can, that's just like any paint, right? You're just learning what the paint does and how it reacts to stuff. But I don't think there's any necessary difference in feel between matte and satin. Not that I've ever noticed, personally. Mm 
Like we all know Tim is a loose cannon. And maybe a loose cannon in a different way than I am. And no matter how many times we all tell ourselves, I'm going to dry fit before I glue, sometimes we get bold. Well, I've gotten bold before, and it's always bit me in the butt. I mean... Definitely around here because like sometimes you got built up without the instructions because the instructions don't exist yet um, when you're doing tests. So you're like, ah, I'm just like, I don't know how to build this at all. I don't know what the engineers were doing. What the guys, what were you doing here? What is this? Why does this go here? And you got to figure it out. You're tempting me to get to this box four swords. Yeah, four swords. That's what I'm saying. You convert one to be in his tail. Oh, just that would be magic. I'm here for nonsense. Like, I've been doing hobby nonsense since the 90s and 80s. Like, like I am here for hobby nonsense. I'm the first person to be like, mm, maybe I do need this $50 kit to turn into a basing element for my favorite character. Probably. Probably. But I'm I'm full of hobby nonsense. I'm like about the hobby nonsense. Claw oh, without the instructions. Yeah, I mean I had to do that myself because like I said, there are no instructions in the very beginning. So you just gotta figure it out, right? That's just part of it. Claw can be tricky. One hundred percent. Claw can be tricky. Like rocking a rhyme. Making a hobby ruckus. Oh. I love making a hobby ruckus. Hopefully someone says that at my funeral. Well, there's Dallas. He liked making a hobby ruckus. I didn't fill the gaps and I don't care Cause the suit's gonna be painted black And they'll be like they're not even there It's mainly cause I got in a super big hurry To build for stream I apologize I broke my own rules, kids. I broke my own rules. Rules are made for breaking. Mm, 
my current favorite saying is without repercussions, there are no rules. incredible yeah it's it's once you start thinking about it you're just like oh that's that's terribly accurate and that's not good a little delicate paint job on a little delicate elf He's gonna teleport his friends around and maybe even himself. Because it's Kurt Wagner coming to save the day. He's a night crawler. Wouldn't have it any other way. We're just turning the suit from that blue undercoat to black. Well, oh, see you later, throw lash. You're going to miss the fun part. That's okay, it's on VOD. Is the fun part the magenta? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we're suckers for magenta on this channel, and the whole world knows it, and we're just not afraid of it. I ain't scared. It's like my one of my favorite colors. Magenta. It's one of those where when the right thing is magenta, to me, everything just feels right. <laughs> it's like I don't want the whole thing to be magenta, but when the right aspect is magenta. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's just snappy. It's just such a snappy color and reads really well. We had a t uh, uh, we had a pixel go out on our TV the other day, um, which is super annoying, right? Because if you've ever had a pixel go out on your TV, it's just a green line, right? And it's just like ah! And so we had to get a new TV. And let me tell you, the magenta on this new TV is insane. We watched a few movies that had a lot of magenta. And uh, let me tell you, that magenta was punchy. It looked great. shadow color from the skin to make his hair black. Uh, the shadow color added a little bit of magenta, or sorry, a little bit of red in there to put some warmth into the skin. Then I'm going to use a little bit of sky blue to highlight his skin. Well, there's a lot of content creators for MCP. Um, it looks like Ann jumped in there and sent you a Discordy, Winky. Oh yeah, that just comes through 
um, every so often. Um, but yeah, I mean, that we absolutely love when people are out there making content around the games that we make. Um, what I would say is you need to be passionate about what you're creating in order to start a channel and um, yeah, I mean, try, try it out. Share what you love with the world. No reason not to. That's all we do. Um, and then obviously, like there, we have rules around on, in all of our various communities. You know, we don't want them to just be flooded with people hyping up their stuff, but we have like the ability for people to share um, an amount of times, like once a week, some content. So there's always people, you know, having a look and see what's out there and decide what you're going to do to make yours different. Just like painting a miniature. You want to be your own content and be your own person. What are you bringing to the table? some white to the another level. amount of blue to our reds because adding blue to red makes a wonderful shade for red That's the second time I've touched that same spot on that leg. It's the angle I'm having to paint here. So you you talked a little bit about this yesterday, but it looks like you're applying some of the same uh, thought process of adding a cool tone shadow to a warm piece and a warm tone shadow to a cool. Is am I miss? No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like when you're painting skin, even when it's a weird non-human skin tone, right? Like um, when you're painting human skin tone, right? You, um, it doesn't matter what color of skin tone you paint for humans. Um, they all follow the same fundamental philosophies and, and adding warmth to skin tones is super important. It helps, helps bring that life into the miniature. It helps make you feel like the character is more alive. So you want to add like a little red when you're painting humans into the skin tone. And anything that's alive, I tend to do the same thing even when they're weird skin tones like green or blue, such as Kurt here. Um, I want to do the same thing. I want to add that little bit of warmth and life. So I always add like a little bit of um, red to my blue skin tones which makes it purple um, and it helps read as more lively and alive um, just a little trick right just a little something to do um, to help help sell the effects and then the same thing um, I just did with the 
then with the reds is blue is just a nice counter. Um, if we wanted to get real sassy, we could pick something um, like green and add it to the red because then you get you, you could push the contrast again in a different way. It would change the way the red looks, but yeah. There's no wrong way. But that's just that's just how I chose to do it just now off the cuff. We're just throwing that little bit of red in the blue and blue in the red. You're tying it together also, you're using similar colors. Kika! All right, magenta. It's magenta time, baby. It's happening. So I like that pink color as a base layer for the magenta, and it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth. Um, we're going to be painting a cloud, an effect, um, a visual representation of Kurt's powers, so you can kind of have it more wishy-washy because I like it more um, sh scribbly, scritchy, swirly, burly, and not just perfect smooth. I want a lot of visual interest in this because it's a roiling um, burst of smoke and brimstone. So I don't mind it being not perfectly smooth at all. I think it's perfectly reasonable and acceptable. And that's that's why it's sometimes like, um, you know, you know, people talk about smooth blending and all that stuff and, you know, I don't want to do it. It looks like great, that's fine. But I think that there's a time for smooth and then there's a time for not smooth and then learning how to use both as a tool um, can make bring more visual interest to your overall miniature painting. Um, you know, if I can make a perfect smooth blended Kurt and then this roiling mass, it's gonna make Kurt stand out more, right? So picking and choosing when to use smoothness, when not to use smoothness, and understanding that um, you know, not painting smooth does not mean not painting, or does not mean paint messy. It's, it's a, it's, you're trying to purposely do something to create texture and visual interest. Super important in art. And we all know we want our moms to think of us as artists. Mom, I'm an artist. Smoke is in motion. Yeah, smoke is in motion. It's moving, it's flowing, it's growing. It's ever-changing and explaining its new definitions and boundaries of existence. So you have an unlimited palette at your disposal to create these effects, really. Once again, it's up to your imagination and what you can come up with 
to make these effects unique and different in yours. You know, there's no one way to do it. It's, it's unlimited. I think that that's interesting. You know, I don't want to tell you how to paint your stuff. I want to help you get to where you can paint it the way you want to. And you know, if that's why you're here, maybe you're just here to hear the jibba jabba. Maybe you're just here for the jibba jabba. And that's okay too. Orange. Orange. Bingham. A bubbum. A little de doop. And some warm yellows. Light to dark spacing depends on texture too. Yeah, light to dark spacing depends on texture too. Um, black armor. If you want something black, um, like say black, black cloth, like your light to dark ratio is totally different, right? Um, like a cape, like imagine, um, who's got a black cape? Quick. Oh man. Uh, Quick. Duke. Oh, I, no. Oh, He's got a red cape. Oh, no. oh. Let's just go with red. Yeah. If so, like a red cape, right? Like Ultron, Thor, um, Beta Ray Bill. I want my highlights from, and my light to dark to be broad. And I don't need to go as high because that indicates a very soft material. If I had like red armor, like say I was doing, like say I was doing Ultron in red armor or Iron Man, I want the highlights, I want that, I want the, the, the light to dark to be further apart. So like it's mainly mid-tone with a very minimal dark shadow and a very minimum bright light um, because that shows hardness. It shows sharpness. It shows um, a material that's more rigid. So yeah, light to dark spacing depends very, very much on texture. Kel Fry coming in with some art knowledge. Dropping bombs with the words of wisdoms. Reestablish some of that red. Lost in the shadow phase. My shadow demon got out of control. Because I was painting Kurt. I was like, he's a little shadow demon. He's just a little shadow demon. He's a fun guy. First appearance Nightcrawler, go. Who's got it first? Without Googling, if you Google, I'll know. out of my realm guessing uncanny x-men on the cover knucklevy are you asking whether we're, we want to know on the cover of the first appearance or in the books or you're just being silly because he would be on the cover I think no matter what, his first appearance is on the cover and in the comic. It's the same book. Unless I'm mistaken. So I don't think I am. No one?
the same comic that Wolverine joins the X-Men. Someone's Googling it. It's me. I'm Googling it, but I'm not here to answer. I was just curious what the answer was. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I just want to know. Oh. X2 the movie? No. That was way before that. 1985, 86, 85. Technically, did, did I get the year right? It ends with five, but it starts with seven. Oh, oh you're right. Se 75, 75. Giant size X Men number one. Ding, ding, ding. First appearance Nightcrawler. First appearance Storm. First appearance. Um. Nightcrawler, Storm, Colossus. Thunderbird. Wolverine joins the X-Men. Banshee joins the X-Men. I always think about characters like Nightcrawler that have like adhesive feet and hands. The like what if they pick feet. up a coffee, a coffee cup? Oh. Like what happens? Can they put it down? If they fling it off? Is it inconvenient or do they choose when to adhere? Life's burning questions. <laughs> It's like that scene in Mallrats, Anne. You're asking all the hard-hitting comic character questions. This face got a little dark, so I'm gonna I'm gonna brighten it up. Yeah, you relax part of your powers. I think that's the only way to explain it, really, right? You like... So what I'm hearing is, nah, you just chill out and it's fine. Yeah, you chill out and the coffee cup <laughs> drops. Just take a breath. Coffee cup drops. As with anything superhero or fantasy or things like that, it's kind of what is most interesting and what is, creates issues that are not fun to deal with. From a storytelling perspective, right? Yeah. Like, if you had to explain really how all of it works, your comic book might be real boring. kids all the cool kids show up in uh, giant size x-men number one for sure do you remember when it came out were you collecting comics at the time 75 no i'm not that old i didn't think so but i i don't know i don't i'm giving you the <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, opportunity i'm not quite that old that 75 is, is before I was born. So no, I was not collecting comics at the time of 
giant size number one. I guess that is like a really long time ago. I didn't really do the math on that question. That so way what was back. your first experience with Nightcrawler? Do you remember? Uh, first experience with Nightcrawler had to be been 90s X-Men. Um, had to be been 90s X-Men. Probably 92. And I think at that time he was in Excalibur. Not actually in X-Men. I'm pretty sure that's correct. And then all those, uh, and then all those X Men comics in the '90s kind of blur together because you were literally buying eleven comics a month just of X Men just to keep up with the stories because they were all bleeding into one another. And let me tell you, in in I didn't have the money for that in the '90s, but I was still doing it. X-Men Evolution was your introduction, Seeker, to Nightcrawler? There's a little blue wink. We only got five minutes. What was everybody's first story they remember with our boy Kurt here? I remember thinking he was cool before I could name many of the X-Men. Yeah, Nightcrawler is always one that kind of stands out, right? for many people. He's such a unique, cool design, um, fun character. See, uh, Secret Wars, that's a great introduction to Nightcrawler. I just finished my Secret Wars collection just a uh, week week ago I was missing I was missing the weird ones I was missing 9 and 11 Which means out of all the Secret Wars, I had the hardest one to get. Put a little purple in there. 90s animated series, yeah. Dexman arcade game, I'm sure, probably bought him. Your son and now and you are now watching the 90 Dexman show every day. Awesome. Yeah, I've been collecting comics for a long, long time. And so being able to bring the characters to life is, is pretty cool. We, we do our best to capture the characters and the rules in the in the minis so if it's leading you and your kid to find some cool joy together and paint like that's awesome to hear that's great it's like one of the best things about um, 
doing what we do uh, at all the levels at which, you know, we, at all of the levels at which we are AMG, whether that's, you know, Dallas and, and what your team is doing and marketing, like there's something so wonderful and uh, fulfilling to hear stories like that and that you guys get to share it through that. I think there was an NES game before I go. Uh, I think there, yeah, there was an NES game way back when um, for X Men. There's an arcade in downtown Seattle that had the X Men arcade game. Enthusiasm is contagious. But so are naps. Hey, you can be enthusiastic about naps. Ah, oh, super enthusiastic about naps. I was watching a show last night uh, called The Reluctant Traveler with Eugene Levy. And apparently Eugene Levy like doesn't like going anywhere. Like just does not like going and doing anything. So the whole show is him doing stuff. And Oh, like as Eugene Levy? Yeah, it's just it's okay, just like Eugene as Levy. Him, the guy, not like him playing a character. Yeah, it's just him. Huh. And he hates it. He he hates <laughs> it. He doesn't want to go outside. He doesn't want to be in the water. He doesn't want to be in a forest. But he does it. Um, and the one last night, he was on this in incredibly fancy hotel, like, yeah, like really fancy hotel. And um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, enthusiasm is contagious. Is that? Oh, nap. They had him fill out the thing, right? Like the what do you like when you go when you try to when you when you're on vacation? Sure. And he wrote the word relax. And like you could just see his eyes. This is like this man would go on vacation to anywhere in the world, sit in a hotel and just Relax. sit. He would just sit. He just wants to sit. And I was just like, I respect this man so yeah. much. Well, there's there's another uh, show like that. It's kind of old, um, but it's a UK show called An Idiot Abroad, which was... Which was amazing. Amazing for kind of the same reasons, right? That it was just somebody with a completely different worldview from most people who enjoy travel being sent on surprise trips by... Uh, Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant around the world, and uh, that show was amazing. That show, I am kind, of, I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> Just makes me happy when I watch it. Oh, last question! Unless somebody gets in a really good one right before I finish this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this question. I'm going to keep painting, and then we can finish it up. Does that sound good, Ann? Love that. Love it. Love it. Um, do you ever struggle to decide which era costumes of characters to sculpt? There are so many cool costumes to draw from. Um, struggle. Is struggle the word I want to use? Sometimes it's very, very, very clear what we're going to do. Um, and then sometimes it's a discussion. And that's where it gets more interesting where you know so our design doc comes from Schick who's like you know you know Nightcrawler you know he's a mobile controller these are not the real words I'm making them up um, you know explaining like what the goal is on the tabletop and, and the sort of costume that, you know, and then Josh and I get a hold of it and then we're like, well, hang on, we gotta, like, we need to, we need to talk, Chick. 
can we do this costume instead? Um, but if you look at if you look at if you look at Marvel Crisis Protocol, you can kind of see where our brain is at, and like it's a growing world. That's a growing, growing world. That's all I'm going to say about that. It's it's an evolution. I think Spider Man is such a great example of this. Like Spider Man has evolved in the Marvel Crisis Protocol. And I think that that's a lot of fun that, you know, it, not every character is going to do that, but, you know, that's kind of where our head is at. You can kind of see where we're thinking about stuff. Well, you also have, you know, stuff like Wolverine and Logan. Yeah, but there's still two. so many versions. Yeah, like Spider-Man so is on it. There's like, like has a tra trajectory, I, I guess, feel yeah, like. that's yeah. true. It's like, he's young, and then he's a little bit older, and now he's a little bit like this, right? Um, and Logan is such an interesting one, right? Because there are so many, like, there's a Weapon X version, there's the Feral version, right? There's there's so many different iterations of him, right? Um, you know, his first appearance, he had, what I tell you? Whiskers. Um, so, so many different versions. Um... But there's, there's always a discussion and there's always like an idea and we try to figure out sort of where we want to go in the future and where we're going right now and what's around it and like, so I don't ever think it's a struggle. I don't, I mean, I don't think most things is a struggle. It's always a discussion, like that's that's part of the creative process is conversation, iteration, exploration, right? Being open to ideas, being open to new things, being open to um, stuff and being willing to explore and create something. So a lot, a lot of fun. But yeah, there are so many iterations of these characters over the 80 some years. This is pretty close, but it's not done. But we did pretty good for an hour. Not bad, right? No. It came together. Not bad. I think it needs more work. Woo! I got a hiccup there. <laughs> I had to hold it in or it's going to blow out your microphone. Um, I think I'll add a little more... Um, like, I'll probably add black to the magenta to get that like brimstoniness around the edges of the, the BAMF. <coughs> Sorry, I have to cough. Um, and then I need to highlight the reds and probably do some touch-ups, um, finish the eyes, finish the hair, and finish the white. And I think it's basically done. So it's not bad for an hour. So hopefully, um, hopefully it puts you on the path and lets you start thinking about the way you want to paint your stuff. So remember, every Tuesday and Wednesday, you can join us right here at Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. It's 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's always the same. Um, join us, hang out, paint, ask some silly questions, hear some silly songs, and do some silly stuff. Let's talk about Carl Pinkerton, apparently. Um, and then for all the latest news, information, and announcements coming from Atomic Mass Games, um, when Anne says the time is right, she... She opens the gates to the Twitters and floods the world with knowledge. Um, you should check us out there, especially now because we're really close to Adepticon and you're going to want to know what we have to say there. It's just not even spoiler, just warning. That's just a warning. It's not a spoiler warning. It's a Be warning. Be warned. We're going to say stuff. Oh, you are warned. <laughs> that's not a warning. That's a threat. Okay. Oh, did I Dial it back. Dial it back. Was Dial that too back. much? Okay, my bad. Okay, okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> I'm done. I don't want to say any more because I'll get in trouble. Yeesh. <laughs> I'm just going to put away my paints and pretend like I didn't say that.